क्विंट्स पॉडकास्ट हेलो एवरी वन दिस इज नॉट फाइन थैंक्स क्विंट फिट्स पॉडकास्ट ऑन एवरी डे मेंटल हेल्थ एंड आई एम योर होस्ट अनुष्का Hey what's up how are you Work is so stressful yeah Man I feel like I'm wasting my youth I feel like I just can't sustain relationships <laughs> Not fine thanks Today's topic is something that I wanted to talk about for a while now we are talking about how to deal with politics and ideologies putting a strain on your friendships and family relations It's not a new issue per se people have had disagreements over ideologies for ages now but I feel like this is something that I've heard people around me complain about lament about increasingly now and maybe it's because they they didn't consider how emotionally draining something like this could be and also they just don't know how to deal with it so i'm here with friends and colleagues zija saptarshi and samarth they work here at the quint and they have strong opinions and today they're here <laughs> to talk about their own stories of navigating this tricky space and also in the second part of the podcast i will be speaking to writer and filmmaker natasha badwar so do stick around for that as well right so welcome guys welcome to the podcast hi <laughs> Nice to be here. Do you guys want to begin yeah. by just kind of setting the context and talking about your situations? Do you experience this in your dining rooms, in your homes, with your in your family chat groups, with friends, and to what degree? Um, I think that the difference in ideologies exists. Like, even if it's not always political or anything, there's always going to be your elders thinking something else, and you have a different opinion on it. Now the thing is that before you make friends and when you date someone and all of that you consider I mean if the ideology matches or not and now the the line is there's no gray area anymore like everybody's like very black and white about it so one of my cousins we we were chatting about the political scenarios and everything and he went to really praise this uh, one leader political leader and I we had like a very a lot I mean we had a lot of argument about it and um now there's a point that whenever we are in a dining room together or anything of that sort we don't look like we don't look at each other mm-hmm. I mean we're like kind of maintaining the distance now and I I didn't expect that to happen I mean he's, he's very elder to me and I would want to go to him and say hello and all of that but now it's like there's a lot of distance of course this also a very big issue that because he is an elder person and all of that so he didn't expect expect me to be so opinionated and you know to tell him that no this is wrong this is not factually correct okay mm. and call him out basically so what about things. you guys sapta uh okay so i would just like to clarify in the beginning ki like since we are talking about difference in ideologies i am actually quite acceptant of a difference in ideologies but in my opinion um anybody who treats anybody else in a discriminatory manner that is where i draw the line and it is and it is and the reason why i connect this to politics so much because these days i don't think we should just judge people based on what they do or because not everybody acts as they think you know our mm-hmm. a lot of our family members we we've seen how they talk about other communities but they won't really behave like that around them but if i won't really forgive them just for even thinking like that so that is where I belong at the moment. You're so what you're by. saying is like uh, it does. It's not just about oh which political party you support, like uh, how you support a sports team, for instance. It becomes a matter of your core morality. Then exactly. Like, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have, part have of you guys point. ever mm. like had fights to the point where you've uh, said that I can cannot have this friendship anymore and had to like cut ties all the time. Mm. Uh, and it's not just an opinion. I have like practiced it. Like I used to have a friend who went to the US to study. <laughs> and he was fine when i said bye to him like we had a great farewell party he was okay like 6 months in he's like full on a, a donald trump supporter mm-hmm. um and i knew what that accompanies right like you can't just be a trump supporter and not think in certain ways and i'm reading his posts and the things he's saying and and the things he's commenting on about what's happening in india and gradually i don't think he even realized it i just stopped calling him i stopped commenting on his photos etc 
and i think to an extent he was doing the same to me i don't know <laughs> uh, yeah initially i i felt a little bad i was like oh do i really want to go down this path where i can't have an opinion and also a friend but later on i started feeling good about myself i started feeling a little proud ki i'm putting my principles over my social needs which is my friends uh, if there's a colleague that you have to actually work with what hmm. will you do what will you do in that say lenge matlab i'll 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 do what i'll do what i have to do like i still yeah, need so my job yeah so that also applies to family for a lot of people cuz they can't um, can't uh, cut ties yeah you i i okay ha huh, i have plenty of people i disagree with <laughs> in my family yeah i i just sit quietly i i fake smile my way it, like the my difference in attitude towards them and towards others who i believe are much nicer people the difference is very obvious and i don't regret it i have let a lot of people go like uh, a lot of uh, uh, parents of my friends and everything who have addressed me like tum logo ke yahan to aise hote na imagine <laughs> imagine that <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I I have been that tum log <laughs> and so during CA I I think that was the worst thing that my identity was reduced to biryani and that was the only uh, somebody told me that uh, you going to stay in this country because the jaake ghar se achhi koi biryani bana nahi sakta imagine hearing that yeah. and choosing to remain friends no, with such a person yeah, i yeah. try to have a conversation with that person try to understand he the, that person still on my social media but we don't talk anymore because like it was pretty clear where i stood and where he was standing and he he was really trying to calm me down by saying hey, don't worry nothing's going to happen but the right. thing that happens yeah. is like <clears throat> you find about this particular thing after a really long time like you after when you meet someone for the first time they're always nice and everything but then when you talk to them at length and these issues mm. these things don't come up in the first conversation mm. right mm. so after a while you just feel betrayed you're like oh my god yeah. Yeah. what is this and yeah. that's when you that's when you decide maybe yeah. so when you have these conflicts say with uh, especially people who are who you're close to people you've grown up with people who have an important place in your life otherwise but there's something that you don't agree with ideology wise or um you know something like you said your morality is don't match something that doesn't go with your um core morality how does that kind of impact your mental health you did mention how you feel betrayed so if you want to elaborate on that or anything. betrayal is one because you you don't know that this person is going to be like that second is i am somebody who would really try to make the other person understand because if i love them dearly and if even if it's just a guy or anything of that sort so i would try to turn it around and try actually make efforts to either i cannot be okay with it but then try to find a midway but in most cases that does not happen and that leaves you in a very bitter state because you really want this person in your life you really want to talk to them you really like them otherwise but then you know these are the there are some things that you would not okay with i mean mm-hmm. i tried to actually date this guy who was a politic <laughs> <laughs> and okay so he is like ki mujhe farak nahi padta whatever the government is doing x y z i am on the ground and i meet people and i do this and i do that and i don't look at somebody and ask their religion and that's how we get work done and yeah. on the ground nobody really ask and look for everybody's relig- religion but actually on the ground people are getting killed for their religion so mm. how can you not really care or you know um everything of that sort but then um i try to do it <laughs> but it just kind of you just want that person to be sensitive to these things do you when you're hanging out with say people who don't care or are apolitical yeah. uh, do do you ever feel like maybe you are over react do they kind of make you feel like why do that you make everything so that is why i tried so that political? is the reason i tried i tried hanging out with this guy for two months okay two months is a wow. long time <laughs> yeah and i tried to understand through his lens also the other thing about him apart from being apolitical was that he was not woke at all and i thought initially i thought i found that endearing that you know now that nowadays you find people who are very they know about everything mm. they know the right words and this and that this person did not know a lot of things he did not know what queer is <laughs> he is a 27 year old boy she should know but the fact that we didn't <laughs> is still different it's yeah, like what yeah but then the but then later Bro, on he ask me okay what is this and everything but then when he told me that he was making fun of the term he was making fun of lgbtq people on his group and he was the fact that he was telling me all of this <laughs> is where i drew the line i was like okay i can't do it but then it did impact me i was like okay this is a really nice guy i have a really nice time with him and mm. but i cannot have a conversation with this person yeah. so it does so, something you mentioned you've cut off a lot of people over uh, this so how how has that kind of i'm sure it is uh it used to guy. affect me a lot okay i'll tell you see the to me not being friends with somebody who treats people discriminatively 
is more acceptable than me not being friends with them and my mental health like taking a toll on it and mm. to be honest i think at the stage where i am right now my mental health will take more of a toll if i continue to remain friends with somebody hmm. who thinks like that hmm. that is where i am so you're right able now. to rationalize and make that yeah because i just have though. a super strong like everything else i just have a super strong opinion on this a relative who uh, so this was when i was studying abroad uh but this was the time when ca and rc had just been introduced and one relative had sent like i don't know was half a joke half a meme what it was nobody knows but the message was ki oh this is how you sort of uh, discipline uh, the 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 terror wow. elements yeah. in this country so of course aise baat memes wagera to har jagah banti hai but for my own family member to share it on a whatsapp group which has like 22 people i exploded and i i i took out my laptop i drafted it on google docs it was like a 250 word message which concluded with ki if this is your if this is what your attitude is going to be then count me out and i sent that whole message immediately my mom texted me on the side saying calm down please don't do this my mommy texted me on the side saying look i am on your side i understand you just ignore if you're not going to say who's going to say no somebody had to come up and this is why if i am the one if i have to be that villain in the family who sort of compromises on the the larger good on like the intra family peace with my uh, political impositions so be it i can be the villain but you know honestly i, I but not have, everybody can afford to do that i have been you yeah. okay i've been uh-huh. this person and i just realize that um it's just weird people just start to view you in that frame in that bracket ke this person is very political or this person is very hardcore this and uh-huh. xyz so you become a stereotype ya jo bhi people don't want to have that have any conversation mm. with you at all so i have been that person and i have gone through that whole thing that you know people don't they they're scared of engaging with yeah. me anymore that and they're not saying anything to me now Speaking yeah. of WhatsApp, I just want to talk also about social media because we're all media people here. We kind of feel it uh, firsthand also. So when you see like, so earlier we didn't know what people's political leanings were, what their standings were, unless you had a deep conversation about uh, politics with them, and you could have a surface level friendship or like a good, pleasant, uh, you know, relation with people. But now because of social media and everything is, everybody is. constantly you know putting out their opinions you know where everyone said like yeah. they carry their labels with it's them a, right yeah. um so uh, i see social media um like it's it's a great way of actually finding what the other person thinks hmm. because i mean i like to share this example that one of my um um cousin relative xyz so um whenever we meet him he is all like oh my sister this and that and he's like very sweet very welcoming and you know harmless in person and i mean it's not just about politics but then i mean i don't care about his political leaning but he's misogynist af yeah and he would post about such thing he's homophobic and i see that on social media he would be sharing all those reels he'd be sharing and he'd be writing his opinion about a lot of things and i'm like this is a different person this is not this person that i know yeah. and now i know i have to distance myself with him i mean if he comes to hug me or kiss me on the cheek i'm like no that is not happening that is wrong i mean Won't i'm not okay with you try to change it. his mind huh when you try to change his mind um i would want to have a conversation and i have had certain mm. conversations with him like when we were when i did not know of his uh, what like how to the to which extent he's a uh, homophobic or misogynist and i've had those kind of conversations but then i'm telling you in person if you are talking to him he will agree with you mm. right, right. he is that kind of a person he'd be like yeah yeah you're right mm. i've had a different like when we sit together we have all those kind of conversation and he always agrees so when i see this on social media i'm like who is this person mm, this is be pen dikha lo one example is dating sites also you have that filter on dating apps also where people want to know what your political leaning is as well yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, i've been on dating apps for long enough to remember ki there was a time when tinder did not ask for political affiliations <laughs> and uh to think that now uh tinder bumble hinge all these apps sort of the fact that now they do or at least they give us that option and uh at least a lot of people who i i, I go through they have clicked on one of those options they haven't skipped it um of course dating apps is just a minuscule part of social mm. media but but it goes on to show that people's expectations have changed i have like a question to ask so for example if you're sitting with 
three of your very close friends or two of your very close friends and you say something or maybe use a word which is politically incorrect or which is a slur but you're not using as a slur but you're just saying it so uh, if a friend says that to you will mm. you call them out or will you say okay, don't use it in front of me or you'll just let it go because it's between 100% friends. I'll call them out <laughs> 100% because these slurs at least the ones I can think of that are flying through my head right now these slurs are always directed at a particular community yeah yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely right? whether yeah, a religious yeah, community are. or a subcast or things like that what if the intent is not there and it can what never if... not be there no so this happens a lot right like um, <laughs> among friends we have to have um, we can't be completely intolerant like I mean hum, yeah. if we are there and yeah. we abuse we tolerate yeah. that for example. Yeah, yeah. 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 so uh, part of abuse is yeah. we tolerate. Yeah. Yeah. Also, so. because <laughs> when you're with friends sitting, you know what the dynamic is with that friend. You know what. Yeah. So and you know that I am there has to be a line basically right yeah. right. but believing in that is something worse right like that's where we draw yeah. the line yeah. Right? Yeah. but in this yeah. case like no, if you're with friends you and you know that your friend doesn't believe in it like it's they're huh. just using it but as can't, we can apply the same to hate speech then politicians give hate speech side mein aake, they can say I don't believe in it I was, no, no but, but hate but, speech that's why I said sitting nah. with a friend in a room and all okay, of that okay. I'm not saying so that you're you not know, provoking anyone into action so there is a threshold of offense I'm just saying that um with friends there, needs there is to a be threshold right in, in, uh, I just meant uh, that the level of intolerance should be certain I mean you need uh, to understand if, if you know the other person like I'm mm-hmm. talking about this best friend that you're sitting mm-hmm. with right you know the other person mm-hmm. you know the intent so you would let go I mean you will call out but then mm-hmm. you will not hold it against yeah. it you will not say bye and I think <laughs> yeah, it matters again about uh, core morality more than yeah. one word that they've said yeah. yeah you can call them out in that but core morality m- matters a lot more at the end of the day that's what I'm saying like, uh, it's okay for uh, you to think that a free market is better than the state intervention all of them fine okay your economics <laughs> might be better than mine but how can you say that falling in love with the same gender so but is, sub, it's yeah. not always that direct no ah, so this person like, would somebody is effeminate this person would call him a girl it's not so out no, and no, that's what I'm saying you, you, yeah. you grow up so like uh, you asked me uh, you know do I cut off people who I grew up with I've cut off a lot of people I've grown up with mm. and especially because a couple of them are still and I okay I don't know who to blame maybe I blame their household or maybe I just blame their brains but they are still quite homophobic they, you, you, they use the words f- very like mm. offensively mm. Mere samne, and I've not like I've frowned and I've said can you not do that again and they're like no no need to be so touchy so <laughs> so people like that I will cut off because like I said keep hmm. I not only do I have a problem with discriminatory behavior I have a problem hmm. with discriminatory thinking, thinking. like yeah. if you think like that I'm not going to accept you because you don't always act as you think right but even if you think in a way that puts other people down Sorry. Okay, just no. to like uh, play the devil's advocate yes. here like a lot of people especially uh, let's just say people of like an older mm. generation who have kind of grown up with mm. certain language saying words that are no longer acceptable mm. which yeah. were very acceptable during that time and they've not done that unlearning mm. of you know going through that process of okay what is right a lot of wrong. people at my yeah and, and when you as a younger person especially in a family where you are like the younger person and if it's like a mama chacha or mm. like a parent and you kind of tell them no this is wrong don't say this they take it as um like you're challenging their mm. position yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah disrespecting yeah. them yeah. also yeah. so kind of how do you deal with that and also do you give them the benefit of um okay you don't know better or it's okay that you don't I definitely give them benefit much. of doubt I try to make them understand like, I think I've come really far away with my mom with it because now if somebody says something you know uh, use any any of those terms she would call them out and <laughs> yeah and she would just say you know I think you should stop using this term because it's derogatory so I think I've come with my mom it's okay but then I've tried to have this conversation and I just tell people ki, you know don't say this it's a wrong term it's a slur or whatever xyz and if they don't agree with it and most of the time they don't agree they don't listen they're like mein jao. so it's fine I think you can't really change that I think that's very important like giving them the benefit of the doubt yeah, and yeah. Um, so that which is why we're able to make these really small small changes yeah. right I mean of course friends people we can ditch right parents <laughs> family we cannot uh, so I think of course like I'm proud of my parents because of this that they're open to listening and mm. on the other hand you also have to not be condescending when you're either mm. not just telling Absolutely. a colleague or friend or 
or a especially an elder person you can't be condescending you have to sort of explain it to them subtly and i don't know like my father is um follows current affairs follows politics my mother is more of a religious person does not care as much about what's going on like my father used to support a political party that i don't support uh, at all and uh, he he was on a different side of the spectrum and uh, over time i used to basically earlier tell him that uh, you know this has happened this has happened and he would tell me that religion being used to spread hatred is not something new mm. and uh, this uh, all of these things that are happening uh, student movements being crushed down is not something new um, and it has happened before uh, and you shouldn't uh, call out the leader for uh, all of this but i think over time uh, because i kept saying this kept saying this he also started seeing the pattern and uh, so much so that he's now like for the past few years like we are on the same page and um, a couple weeks ago on a family what not a family whatsapp the society whatsapp group mm. this uh, old neighbor of mine shared a very propaganda communal message and my father got really triggered by that in so much so that he uh, called him out on the society whatsapp group wow ki it's uh, this is this is communal propaganda whatever whatever and those who don't um like uh, I, i i delete this message in one hour or i will leave this group okay. so <laughs> i don't think like threatening is the best way to go about it but like i was still proud of him that he at least called him out and others started calling him out after that and uske baad propaganda or messages like this have not come on that group so like you were able to get through to him over a period of time like talking yeah, to him so, and but at the same time like i agree with uh, sapta for uh, example that uh, like i mean we all know it's really exhausting to Uh, try to engage with with people. people and like change their mindset because some people are really i mean they're not going to listen to logic or reason but this is a, reason. Like a great example like when we're saying not engaging yeah. with people yeah. but your father did in exactly. a correct way <laughs> and it stopped right so i mean somewhere you will have to engage i mean if we all will feel that we exhausted because mm-hmm. i just want yeah. to uh, yeah. give example of this one person yeah. he is basically a protest artist so he always tells me about how he is friends with people who what totally against this ideology because he believes in coming out of that echo chamber hmm. and having that conversation and reaching out to people who don't agree and really converting them so i'm sure i mean i don't think it's easy for him as well like have this person come to his hu- uh, come to his house and you know have these long discussions where you agree to disagree and still be friends with them because hamare liye otherwise it's very easy you know yeah to be friends with and not really try like that but then this person i know who's trying and he has a lot of people like that so i know we, why we get exhausted but then this is a great example that you know yeah, things can so like, change so friends i can ditch okay uh, so i can not <laughs> here with Natasha Bhadwar she is a writer a journalist a filmmaker and she often writes very honest pieces about um life in general but also politics her family life friendships and so forth so i thought it would be really interesting to get her inputs on the subject that we're talking about today thank you so much for being here natasha it's such a pleasure to have you here Thank you Anushka it's lovely to be with you today. So um I was having a conversation uh, with a couple of my friends about how politics and ideologies impact your relationship with your friends and your families and how it can cause rifts uh, with people that you love and this issue has really come to the surface in the last few years not just in India but the world over and people have talked about how they've struggled with um navigating the situation and also dealing with the mental and emotional um drainage that they feel because of this to begin with can you tell me a little bit about if you see this happening around you as well yeah uh, it's it's really quite shocking uh, what a polarized world we live in and how how it's just seems to be slipping uh, you know away from our hands i mean it's uh, 2022 now and at least for the last uh, say maybe 8 years or 10 years we've been um experiencing this collectively 
uh, not only in our relationships, but in our uh, uh, with our own extended uh, social group. Uh, each one of you knows what is a lie, what is a truth. But uh, we're just living in a time where it's absolutely okay to uh, to just shoot off disinformation, to say uh, to say bigoted things, and, uh, and 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 nobody will call you out for that. And it's absolutely crazy trying to uh, maintain relationships in this time in trying to raise children. And so when you have this kind of a, a disagreement, how do you deal with, um, say, somebody that's very close to you that you've known for a very long time, who's important to you in your life, and they say something, say, a really misogynistic or um, anything that doesn't kind of match with your core morality I've heard people say I feel betrayed because I feel a sense of disappointment because I've known this person and loved this person for so long but then they come out and say something like this so how do you navigate or deal with a situation like that within your families and you know with friends we know how uh, social hierarchies are I mean you can be you can you can be a, a grown-up professional, but if you are, you know, with an uncle or an aunt in the family, you still have to kind of nod your head and agree with things that they're saying. But uh, but I refuse to allow that to become bigger than it had to be. And I literally, I I, I would uh, just leave. I leave WhatsApp groups. I am not in my school WhatsApp group. I'm not in my family WhatsApp group. We constantly know everybody's political standings on anything that happens in the world uh, through status updates or stories. I just want to get your thoughts on how much do you think social media really plays a role in also uh, deepening these rifts? Um, it has. It has actually increased the rift to, to a large extent. It is true um, that um, the, you know people's presence on social media, particularly WhatsApp, uh, and, and this kind of blind forwarding of things, it's a, it seems to be the blind spot of so many people. It's heartbreaking. Uh, you know, I won't deny that. It's, it, it saps your energy. It breaks your heart. Uh, and, uh, and then you think to yourself, what am I going to do? Am I going to mope about it? Uh, or am I going to see where am I placed in my life? What are the privileges I have? What is the way in which I can counter this in some way? And uh, and I see that a lot of people uh, are trying to do that. I mean, just the fact that you know you're recording a podcast. Uh, we are different generations, but we are t- having a conversation about this because we uh, we feel the hurt collectively. So uh, you know, one of the things I pretty consciously tried to do uh, was to uh, not allow bigotry from the real world to necessarily infiltrate my online spaces. Um, And uh, I can't say that I've been successful at it, but I can say that it's something that I almost kind of foresaw. So on my Facebook, I uh, blocked the kind of people within my family and from my school group uh, or muted them uh, if they were, you know, just going to be blatantly anti-minority, anti-women um, and, and, and anti-poor and, you know, just very authoritarian uh, in, in the kind of views they expressed because these are people I've known in real life. They don't talk like that. They didn't grow up speaking like this. And suddenly uh, they, they on the online space, the anonymity of it or the, the groupism of it uh, seemed to be giving them some kind of confidence. And I said to myself, I'm just going to keep it separate. I may be forced to be polite to this person in a social situation, but I don't have to allow this to come into my Instagram, my Twitter, my Facebook or even my WhatsApp. I am not obliged in an absolutely new place to follow the rules uh, of social obligations. And uh, and to, to a certain extent, it helped me keep my own headspace clean. It helped me uh, to have a space in my life where I could fearlessly express my own self as an adult, uh, you know, and... And uh, and I found that it didn't necessarily isolate me. I found that it helped in many ways to separate the grain from the chaff in a way. You know, people who want to stay in touch with you 
uh, or who want you to know that they're not uh, actually agreeing with those they don't speak up against, they find other ways of getting in touch with you. And it may seem like your world's becoming smaller, but in many ways, uh, your connections become much more authentic. And uh, also, if you don't mind getting a little personal, I mean, you have an interfaith marriage. So I wanted to ask you, was that ever a matter of contention with your family, extended family? Were there people you had to um, convince, reason with? So yeah, I do have an interfaith marriage. My husband's a Muslim. I am from a Hindu family and we have three children. And we got married in 2002. It was uh, the year of the violence in Gujarat, the pogrom in, uh, in Gujarat. We are still seeing the repercussions of that violence. Uh, But to be honest, uh, you know, India is a country of arranged marriages, right? So you don't necessarily have to choose somebody uh, beyond your faith. You're just the act of falling in love, of making your own choice, of even going uh, slightly outside of your caste or your economic uh, uh, class, uh, or, or just exercising the agency to choose your own partner can set off a series of reactions in the extended family. So sure, there was uh, there was opposition. There was a sense uh, uh, that we ourselves had about whether uh, uh, you know people who we love and respect would be able to deal with this. We didn't want to hurt anyone, but it uh, it was not a difficult decision at all. Neither for us, nor for our immediate family, not you know not for our parents. I do remember that uh, there's a particular aunt uh, who lives abroad who had been seeing the news coming out from India and at that time. And she said, what are you doing? Uh, there will be riots. You will be the target of violence. And this is 2002. So we thought, you know, she's just being a little neurotic. But I do remember that moment. I remember that with, uh, with so much agony and remorse uh, that we have actually come to a point 20 years down the line where young people uh, mar- marrying or falling in love across uh, faiths are being targeted. We can't anymore deny that it is actually a very dangerous uh, thing for a Hindu to fall in love with a Muslim, for a Hindu to befriend a Muslim. And, and also when you talked about friendships, I mean, this is something that um, uh, it just happens in such a passing way in families. Like if you have, say, a friend from a community that your family doesn't really agree with and they will pass comments about your friend um, based on stereotypes, based on their preconceived notions. And it can be really hurtful for a child or a person to hear about their friend being talked like that uh, from parents, people who they hold in high regard. You know, the mental health aspect also comes into it where it can be quite distressing emotionally, right? When you have to kind of balance between the two. Absolutely, Anushka. You know, I have no doubt that our young people today, you know, they have internalized uh, conflict and they are uh, living with with a dissonance that is way beyond uh, something that I grew up with. You talked about how you didn't want to hurt people in your family. So you were also trying to kind of find that uh, balance. So a lot of people I spoke to also talked about the way they approach it is either they don't talk about it at all, like with family members, especially like close family or close friends who are very important to them. They won't talk about this one thing because they don't agree upon it and they don't want to address it or they will debate them. They will, um, you know, try to have a discussion with them, which can lead to a lot of conflict and bitterness or they choose to cut people off. Like you mentioned, cut people off on social media, leave family groups or stop, stop talking to people because they just can't reconcile with their way of thinking. You know, we kind of tend to have this position of I am right and the other side cannot be reasoned with and I don't want to put in the effort because I know they can't, you know, you can't get through to them. But I'm also wondering, is not engaging really the right way to go about it? Is that really helpful when it comes to especially family and friends? Yeah, no, um, you, I mean, I think you're asking a really, really important question and you're in a way you're making a very important point. Not engaging is not going to get us anywhere. Uh, you know, cutting people off, um, just um, isolating ourselves in like a uh, among like-minded people is not going to uh, solve any problem. Protecting my uh, online spaces, particularly my WhatsApp, uh, what it helps me to do is conserve my energy. 
What it helps me to do is uh, not have to deal with the microaggression of every day forward so that when I meet the same people uh, socially, they know what uh, or what I what my political ideology is. I know what theirs is, but I'm not bogged down. I'm not overwhelmed by by the nonsense that is being spewed on an everyday basis. And I find that I, I have the energy to look them in the eye, to be able to connect with them, to to stay uh, to stay together. And um, I do have cousins who, you know, ha- who have been uh, very bigoted in their online expression. And by not engaging with them in the online space, I find that I'm able to engage with them in the offline space. I find that people know they come and engage with me when they need me. By not engaging on a day-to-day basis with each other's polarized opinions, I think we've saved that space somehow. I don't want to lose my friendships and my relationships. I want uh, that space to exist where uh, where we can go beyond this all and and still find things that uh, we hold in common. Thank you so much for joining me on this podcast today this is the last episode of the series so i want to give a hearty thank you to everybody who's been on the podcast as well as everyone who has been tuning in to listen to all the other wonderful podcasts that we have in store for you do follow us on spotify and other podcast platforms and do follow quinfit for more health and mental health related stories 